Hello everyone, 60 mm DJ again, just back from school, and um, I made my Polaroid Vision camera video just a second ago, so if you are watching this one, which is on the uh, Revere Ranger 8mm camera, you can go and check that one out if you're also into Polaroid cameras, uh, it might be a little interesting. Anyway, um, this is a, a camera, I believe it was, this one was made in 1949, uh, I, don't, I don't really have any basis off that other than a, um, a uh, eBay posting, a few eBay postings that I saw that were from 1949. And 48, so I'm pretty sure this one's from 49, because the uh, the earlier one, the 48 one, looked a bit different. So um, uh, I'm assuming it's from 49. Anyway, uh, I'll give you sort of a round the uh, round the thing view. So here's your lens. Of course, it, it is um, fixed focus, so you don't have to do any focusing. All you have to do is adjust the f-stop with um, with the handy little meter here. So if you're in um, if you're in a bright day like it is outside, you probably set it to around 11 or 8, and it says right here. So Says eight, nice small aperture, and it goes all the way up to from 16 down to 2.5. So um, it's as you can tell for extremely bright conditions and for um, somewhat dim conditions. Basically, um, if you're going to shoot indoors, you're going to want it to be pretty well lit, like it is in here. You can't really tell, of course, because the camera's doing all kinds of weird stuff to the image. But um, I've got a huge window open here, and that's letting tons of sunlight. I also had another one open, but I I blinded it because it's making all kinds of weird glare. But basically, you need as much light as you can, and that would probably be on one of the um, the more open apertures anyway, because um, uh, basically all eight millimeter super eight and sixteen millimeter film needs a lot of light in in general. So that was a bit of a rant, but here we have a little thing that we can hold it from your thumb or your wrist, or in, you can wrap your hand in it and um, like this, and have a nice steady thing when you're video when you're taking videos. And uh, here's the viewfinder. The other side is back here, and um, basically it's a really small thing. You can't really expect much of these out of these little eight millimeter cameras. Of course, it's really small. It looks like it's really far away and off in the distance. Um, going around the side here, we come around. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. Here, up here, there's a foot counter, and this is a reversal type of um, eight millimeter film. And uh, basically, what that means is you're going to run it through on one side. It's basically twice as wide as 8 millimeters, so it's 16 millimeters. It's basically 16 mil millimeter film, double perforated. So that means instead of um, a perf every, I don't know exactly the, dis the distance, but um, oh, a spider just got a fly in this web outside my window. That's kind of cool. Oh, it got away. Sorry about that. Um, it's basically 16 millimeter film, and instead of perforated just like that, it's perf like da 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 da. So instead of half notes, it's quarter notes if you if you're if you understand music and stuff like that. So, or 8th, 16th notes, or blah, blah, blah. Um, this is a foot counter footage, so it basically um, there's 25 feet of film per side, plus the 6 or so feet of, um, of uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Yeah, with cameras like, like this, it's called a dark slide, but um, shine, so. leader, that's it. So there's about 6 plus feet of leader, and you just basically have to count that out as you run it through and as you load it. And down here, we have a speed selector. It goes all the way from uh, 12, uh, 12 frames per second, 16, to 24, to 32. Now, with most 16mm um, cameras, most people shot in 16, but 24 is also acceptable. You won't have as much. Um, it will, things will look more normal speed if you projected it. It would look more normal paced. Um, I'm pretty sure, because most 8 uh, mm projectors, I think, shoot in 24 frames a second, or, or project in 24 frames per second. Some have the option to do 16, so if you have a projector that does 16, you can shoot it in 16 frames per second. It'll look a little bit more choppy, but you'll also have much longer um, time uh, shooting. And this this has about two and a half minutes altogether, and that's nowadays that's about thirty dollars, thirty dollars, three zero, um, with developing, processing, all that, all that stuff. Developing and processing are the same thing. Anyway, here we have our shutter. I wound this up a bit earlier, but. By the microphone. Um, yeah, there's a little shutter. Uh, I, I had another one. It was a Revere B63. I could push it forward and it would take single frame shots. They so could do like stop motion animation, etc. This one is only forward. I also have a Revere 63, and this is a Revere uh, 81. Um, I don't know much about it, but uh, here we have the key winder. Uh, it's basically you just wind it up. And um, wind it until it feels pretty tight. Nowadays, you kind of don't want to wind it all the way and until it binds up on you because it, these things are really kind of old and they're 
starting to fall apart and the spring could snap on you. You never know. But um, and it's also also always a good idea if you don't have any film in it just to let it run down all the way. And um, there we go. Um, let's see, going around the back, there's not much, it's just these little screws here and the viewfinder. And um, basically stick that up to your eye and as I said it looks really far away. Uh, here we have our door, our film door, which has the little lock on it, locking mechanism, and also has the panel that I was talking about that had the uh, suggested, uh, uh, what was it, suggested um, aperture sizes. And if you flip this little knob up, or a little latch or whatever, and you pop that open, look what you get. You get a take-up spool. It's a little, a little tricky looking in the view uh, webcam's um, preview window. Um, here it says, I'm trying to figure out which way is up, it says um, film when on this spool is only half exposed. But, and as you can see it's double wide, um, it's basically twice as wide as 8mm film. Actually I can show you this, I will be right back. Okay, so here I have some 8mm film. This is just the beginning of some little uh, western. And um, basically, as you can see, I'll try to make this as clear as possible. It's a little tricky to do this. But basically, it's about half as wide as the entire thing. And what they do is when they develop it, they process it as they would 16mm film. And um, they'd run it through the thing. And as soon as they're done, they would split it down the middle, um, split the film down the middle. So it would make two two um, strips of 8mm film, about, I guess that would be one and a quarter minutes each, and and uh, they would spl splice the two ends together so that you had one whole movie, and they'd put it onto a reel like this, a 50-foot um, uh, smaller reel. As you can see, the width is also about half as much. Anyway, um, this is that spool, and this is the one that basically stays in the camera the entire time. Once you run it through off the spool that you get from the um, the photo lab or the wherever you bought your film, you'd run it through once, and then it would run through the um, run through the the film film gate, and then the one sprocket. There's only one sprocket on this machine, and um, it would go into the take up spool, and you'd take this out, flip it up here, and then you'd three thread it, and you'd put the um, the, the spool that the film came out onto here, and um, you, once that was through, you would send it off to the uh, developer, and then they would um, develop it for you. And then you got your checkup spool again. So, try to. Well, let's, come on, just get out. Alright, I'll try to show you the path of uh, the way you thread this thing. Basically, it, I'm going to have to look at it this way because it makes more sense and it's harder. It's, it's not like. This isn't like looking in a mirror, it reverses it. So, it's just my little excuse. Basically, um, the film will come off this and you need to little, open this little latch here, this little door, and that's where the, um, the pressure. This is basically the pressure plate. I uh, shouldn't be touching that, but um, it, it presses the film up against the, um, the, uh, well, I haven't thought about these terms in such a long time, because I haven't been doing many videos about these, but anyway, it holds it against the, um, god damn it, whatever the hell that thing is called, I feel so professional, and it makes a loop down here, and then it goes over this one sprocket, which basically makes it so that it doesn't jerk when it's taking up all the pressure with, all, with the uh, take up spool, and um, then once that's threaded up, you clamp it down, you close it, and then there is uh, about six feet of black leader, as I said. So you close that, and then you'd be able to, as soon as you've made sure everything looks right, you run a couple of feet, uh, give it a couple of lines, run a couple of feet, and make sure that it's um, it's doing everything correctly. You would then make sure you also have to put it on this, put it on the take up spool, and then you close it and lock it up, and then you'd be sh you'd be ready to go take some film, take some pictures, movies, whatever. And also when you um, start doing this you're going to want to reset your footage meter to zero after you've um, after you've made sure you've gone through the six feet of leader. So you'd probably want to wind it up a few times and you could probably set it to um, uh, oh come on, 32 frames a second and run it through really quick and do that until it ran through the, the six feet. Anyway, um, that's about it. 
Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Any other? Oh, forgot to mention this little tripod socket in the bottom. So if you wanted to put it on there, that would you would be able to do that. So um, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I uh, I got this recently in Ann Arbor when I in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with uh, at my um, at my relative's house, and I got this um, for like five dollars, I think, at some thrift store. I forget what it's called. Something treasures. Yeah. Anyway, uh, great little find, cool little camera. Uh, still seems to work perfectly. Um, I'm hoping to. My language arts teacher likes doing movies in his class, so I'm hoping to um, get uh, some film and maybe have part of this as a proper, maybe even use it as as the media to record to film the movie with. Or I might decide to try out the um, the 16 millimeter. Uh, Bell and Howell, that's from 25, and I, you can see the other video of that in, on my channel. So um, please subscribe, uh, rate, comment, all that jazz, uh, check out my other videos. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Oh, and uh, yeah, which way? hope you like my craft work poster as well, or craft work as they would say in Germany. It's kind of neat, my mom found it at um, some record store, uh, Everyday Music in Seattle. So, uh, yeah, as I said, hope you had a great day. Um, it's kind of the afternoon now, but uh, yeah, see you all later.